coloring translucent silicone such as Platsil gels with pigments and flocking. Today we're going to be covering the differences and applications of both silicone paste pigments and flocking powders. Now to begin, both of these materials are critical in the coloration of silicone to create realistic flesh tones. Now silicone pigments are basically uh, dispersions in silicone oil. They're just very concentrated silicone paste pigments and those have to be mixed into silicone. They cannot be used as paint by themselves. They're just concentrated pure pigment. Now flocking on the other hand, flocking is actually a very fine powder. It's actually a little fiber and these are just tiny little fibers that can be stirred into silicone. They don't actually go into solution. They're basically just tiny little micro fibers. So here's the basic information you need to understand when you're working with pigments and flocking. Now first of all, silicone pigments, as I mentioned before, but real important to reiterate, it's not paint. It is a dispersion that disperses or dissolves in silicone, and it's based on silicone oil. This is not acrylic paint or oil paint, and this does not affect or not change the silicone chemistry. Now flocking on the other hand is a small inert fiber and it does not dissolve so it maintains itself as a little independent particle in the silicone once it's mixed in. It's inert so it doesn't change the chemistry but real important because it is a little microfiber if you add enough of it it can change the viscosity of the silicone. So real important if you're pigmenting with just flocking you might see a viscosity change and that's one of the reasons in this video we'll be covering the use of both of these materials together because working together they create the perfect combination of realistic pigmentation. Now in this video I'll be brushing some silicone into a mold to create a realistic silicone skin of a face. Now one of the things I like to do is pre-measure out all the silicone I'm going to use for a particular project into graduated containers and mark those A and B. And this is a really important step. This allows me to measure out what I'm going to use for that project and pigment those A and B sides independent of each other. And this allows me to get the pigmentation exactly the way I want it before those two parts are combined. If you pigment just the part A or just the part B, what happens when you add the part A or other part B that's not pigmented, when those two parts are put together, you're gonna to have a slight color change. Now it's not major, but when you're working on a really critical project with a really critical flesh tone, that's a, a really important consideration because this ensures that especially when you're doing a brush up application like you'll see here, when you're doing multiple layers of silicone, you want to ensure that all of that silicone is the, exactly the same color. Now the first step we'll be mixing in a little bit of silicone pigment to establish our base color. Now in this case I'm mixing up a fairly fair skin tone. Now if I'm doing a, uh, a darker skin tone or a more of a medium flesh tone, what I'll do is a lot of times I'll start with our basic flesh tone or maybe a darker color. But in this case, anytime we're working with a very fair skin tone, I like to start with white and build up from that point. Because remember, with silicones and translucent materials, it's always easier to, to make it darker. It's You can't undo that. Once you make it dark, you can't make it light again without opaquing it. So real important, start with the lightest color and work up from that point. Now it's also a good idea to have a target flesh tone in mind. In this case, uh, we're doing a fair skin tone on a face, and you'll see me every now and then check the flesh tone on the inside of my arm. But you always want to pick the fairest area or the lightest tone on a person's face or on the creature you're working on or whatever it is, you want to make sure you pick the lightest tone and match to that. Because again, in the painting stage, you can always make it darker, but with translucent materials, you can't make it lighter. Again, the only way to make it lighter is to opaque it, which destroys the translucency that uh, is the whole point of working with a translucent material like uh, Platsil Gel 10. Now here I'm just adding a little bit of flocking at a time to both of the uh, A and B side. And real important uh, to establish that very lifelike look, I always like to add a little pinch of red. Now here I'm just doing kind of the basic uh, flesh tone that I typically work with, which is uh, uh, primarily the flesh tone flocking 
a little bit of the tan, and then a little pinch of red. And that's kind of a good, just generic flesh tone to start with. And using that white as a base gets you a nice uh, a background to that and makes ensures that you start out fairly light and then you can gradually build up from that point. Now you'll notice on uh, both of those about one quart cups there I added about a pea-sized little glob of the white silicone pigment and when you're starting out with this remember that that silicone pigment is very concentrated so when in doubt start in small amounts and build up because again the last thing you want to do is destroy that translucency so always add that pigment in very small amounts at first and build up and same thing with the flocking you'll notice here I didn't get it quite as dark as I wanted so I'm adding a little bit more of the tan flocking and a little bit of the red and because we're mixing the two A and B sides independent of each other uh, we don't have anything time critical right here so we can mix these up and get them exactly the color we need them to be before we start mixing them together and they're catalyzed and the clock is ticking so here I'm just adding more tan and more red flocking and this is a good starting point. The more experience you get at matching flesh tones, the more other colors you'll use. In our flocking kit, we have red, we have green, we have blue, and all of those can be used to tweak that flesh tone to get it exactly the color that you want. And now we're ready to mix up our A and B of our Platzil Gel Tin. And real important step here, even though we have written the A and B side on the two components, you'll notice that after I dispense my A component, I set that aside totally out of the way so I don't accidentally grab that twice. And once I measure out my part B, I set that aside as well. And that's one of those minor little uh, housekeeping tips that really improves your uh, work. And just about everybody watching this who's uh, mixed silicone for any length of time has done that at some point of time of mixing two part A's or two part B's. So now we're ready to mix up our two components. And you notice that because we got those two uh, components pigmented exactly the same, when we mix those together, there's no color change. And now I'm ready to uh, brush that into our hydrocal mold. This is a, a hydrocal mold. You might have seen this in the previous video. We just posted about uh, resin eye forms. So if you're new to that, be sure to check out that video. And also, since this is kind of an overview, focusing more on the pigmentation process, I'm going to put some uh, links in the video description below that will take you to a page on our website that's full of videos that focus uh, on everything from uh, making the mold uh, for a bust like this to uh, mixing the silicone, uh, putting it in the mold, backing it with foam, and of course airbrushing it later on. So be sure to check that out. I'll put those uh, descriptions and of course the product links in the video description below. So check that out. And now you'll see after that first layer set up, we're coming back with a second layer once we've got those eye forms in place. And you'll notice that because that second layer is composed of that exact coloration, we don't have any differentiation there between those two layers. And that's really important because if you're brushing in a really large skin, the last thing you want to have is uh, areas that uh, have like a patchwork quilt kind of look to it. So now when we demold our part, uh, we've got a piece that's all one homogeneous color and ready to take paint. Now another uh, quick note on that is when you're seaming a piece like this, any leftovers from that original batch can be used for seaming. So it's always a good idea to retain some of that original batch for seam work. Now for the painting process. And again, quick overview. If you're new to painting silicone, check the video description. I'll put uh, links to a page with lots of uh, painting tutorials. But uh, once we've got our color established intrinsic to our piece, we're ready to paint. And all of our paint going over the top, again, we can only make it darker. We can't make it lighter. So anything in a translucent uh, paint scheme is only going to add color and slightly darken the piece. So that's why it's imperative that you start with the lightest skin color possible so that you don't wind up uh, having to opaque an area in order to get it the proper color. Now one of the reasons I like uh, gel tin so much for this kind of project is gel tin's ability to bond to itself very well and all of the other Platzil gels as well but especially gel tin and gel 25 really bond well to themselves so that allows us to create paint using more gel tint so my our typical paint formula for this kind of project is gel tin mixed with pigment and then thinned with naphtha and depending on how much we thin it that determines whether or not we're going to apply it with a brush or we can add more naphtha and put it through an airbrush 
And we'll have a lot more information on painting in the links in the video description. So be sure to check those out. And just a quick glimpse at uh, the end goal for this. This was a, a little silly personal project I had of wanting to sculpt one of the life casts we had here in Monster Clay, sculpted into a partial reptilian face, uh, inspired by the 1983 TV show uh, V. So there you have it. There's the process of uh, mixing realistic flesh tones and you don't have to create a reptilian. This could also be for a silicone doll or silicone appliances or any number of things. So be sure to check the video description for product links. We supply all of the silicone pigments, the flocking, and of course the Platzil gels on our website. So be sure to check out the video description and remember all these products can be found on our website at brickintheyard.com. And thanks again for watching and if you haven't already be sure to like and subscribe.